On behalf of our church history committee, we are visiting today with Mr. Charles Hudson, longtime member of the First Baptist Church on the Square. Here we are, November 2006, and we are reflecting on some of the most progressive years of the 178 year history of this church. Uh, I know that Mr. Hudson was uh, very prominent, has been very prominent throughout uh, many of those recent years, and we appreciate your willingness to sit with us today and, and visit a bit. Uh, I uh, would appreciate it if you would share some biographical highlights, uh, maybe uh, your parents' names, name of your wife, <coughs> your names of your children. My wife's name is Ida. She was Ida Callaway. My children, my oldest child is Jane Addis Craig. My next is Ellen Harris. Next is Charles Hudson Jr. And next is Ida Russell. Those are my four children and I have 11 grandchildren. And uh, I hope you don't ask me to name all of them right now. <laughs> Well, 11. I have seven, and I know the challenge. What are some of your earliest memory, um, memories of uh, your experience here in this church? Of course, I came to Sunday school every Sunday. My mother and daddy would bring me to Sunday school. I, had a brother that's, I have a brother that's two years younger. He would come too. And my daddy ushered every Sunday at the church. And we had a regular sitting place that we sat close to the back on the right-hand side of the church. And I still sit on the right-hand side of the church. We, uh, I can remember of laying down in my mother's lap and my brother on the other side laying down. And I guess I was sleeping through church. <laughs> but the first minister that I remember as my pastor was... Dr. Walter Benz, uh, you, Dr. Benz and his family. How old were you when you were baptized? I, I was, I think, six years old, but I can look it up and tell you right. exactly. You don't need to. Six years of age. I think I was six, but I, the baptistry at that time was in a different part of the church. Oh, yes. Only if you... Looking toward the pulpit, the baptistry was to the left, where the doors are over on that side was where the baptistry was, and it was level with the floor of the main sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, I was baptized there by Dr. Willis E. Howard, who Dr. was Howard. Dr. Willis Howard, who was pastor when I joined the church. Reflecting on some of those years, those early years of your experience, uh, reminds me, I overheard you and Calvin Spinks uh, chatting earlier uh, about some of the things that you remember from around town here, like uh, there was a barbershop and a shoeshine man in the barbershop. Tell us about that. Maybe, Calvin, you <laughs> might want to add some things to that. Well, it's every Sunday, the shoeshine shop barbershop open where you could get your shoes shine um, and the one shining shoes was named Ed Lee and uh, you could get your shoes signed on Sunday morning and like on your way to church on your way to I church see. or between <laughs> church and Sunday school oh, okay. between All Sunday right. school and church yeah. of course back in that day that's one of the big changes I see in the in our church today is the dress. Uh, even as a child, you had a Sunday suit, and you'd wear that suit on Sunday, and uh, you wore a tie with it. And today, the dress is entirely different. In fact, in those days, all the ladies wore hats, and yes. you didn't see a lady in the church without a hat on. Yes, yes. And while we're on the dress code, Dr. Willis Howard would wear a cutaway in the pulpit. That's a black coat that had a long tail and striped pants. and That's what he would wear every Sunday morning when he preached. 
I'm sure you remember those experiences, Calvin. Yeah. Right, and <clears throat> Charles talked about he sits back in the back on the right. Yes. And I remember his parents, uh, we always referred to them as Mr. J.D. and Miss Janie. Uh, Miss Janie was a stately lady, pretty lady with reddish blonde hair. I think that's where some of Charles' kids get their red hairs from Miss Janie. Mr. J.D. was a Bro Brummel type dresser. Always, always immaculate. I haven't heard that name in a long time. And, uh, he usually wore a white shirt and a red tie. And I remember one experience about him being in the barbershop where Charles said he got the shoes shine on Sunday morning. Uh, Mr. J.D. usually, he had, I never remember him when his hair wasn't white. And he wore crew cut. And he was in there one day. This was, then it was Rice's Barbershop, formerly belonged to Mr. Hill, but Mr. Mr. Rice owned it. And Pete Smith, I think, cut Mr. Hudson's hair. Yes. And Mr. Hudson had gotten a, gotten a haircut, and he was up putting on his tie and getting it adjusted. And he looked across the square in this direction to the church and he was just kind of sort of maybe halfway talking to himself he said the first Baptist church is the brightest spot on the square the brightest spot, brightest spot the brightest on, the square. on the square and yeah. he reflected just a moment he got real quiet and then he added and he said it's a reminder <laughs> it's a, a reminder, reminder. yeah um, That's interesting. Mr. and Ms. Hudson, they were, they were rock solid folks and always at church, anything that the church undertook, uh, they would do their part. Yes. And Mr. Hudson was a successful hardware merchant. I think the store was in the same place till he sold it down right. on Main Street. On Main Street. Mm -hmm. they, they were just great folk to know. Yeah, good. Thank you for sharing that. Charles, uh, when were you ordained a deacon? I have to look that up. Well, that's, also. that's okay. I, you don't have to say. I exactly. was a junior deacon first. Explain that. Uh. Uh, they had junior deaconship, which were ones of us I know about college age, mm -hmm. and uh, because I was at Auburn. You were still in college. I, was, you were I had gotten out of the navy and was mm -hmm. at Auburn. Mm -hmm. and uh, would come home to the deacon, junior deacon meeting. So that was like maybe 1946 or somewhere mm -hmm. right That'd after his Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But uh, we would meet, and of course we could make recommendations to the board of deacons, mm -hmm. but we were, Kevin, I think it was just more or less kind of a training situation before you became a deacon. Yeah, I think we finally dissolved the junior board of deacons because they didn't have any authority. That's right. They, they, they could, really couldn't do anything except yeah. push them. And, and make recommendations. And make yeah. recommendations. Yes. Right. But it was a good training experience. It was. For deaconship. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, thank you. Uh, Charles, uh, you've served as a church usher, I know, for a long time. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, maybe how it's changed over the years. Well, the big change is the fact as I said earlier, everybody was ushered to that seat. Mm -hmm. uh, as a regular usher, you knew where everybody sat. Yes. You better not put anybody in somebody's <laughs> seat. You just <laughs> yeah. had a seat. Because I know where Calvin's seat is now, up in the up in the balcony. Yes. And he sits in the same seat every <laughs> Sunday. I sit, sit in the same seat every Sunday. I sit at the back, and then when the service is when the, we stand to sing the last song, I get up and open the church doors. Oh, oh yes. Uh -huh. And then open the doors outside weather permitting. Speaking of, of changes, uh, what would you say are, are some of the most significant changes that you've observed in our church over time? 
like you know, dress the activities would, or the ministries or the music, whatever you care to share. Dress would be one. Dress, yes. And the other one would be the music. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, back in the days, Miss Viola Bucks was our organist, and uh, we had a lady that taught music in the school system, and her name was Miss Baker, and she was a choir director, and the choir wore robes every Sunday. They sat there the entire service, okay. uh, and they would stand when we would sing any song, but they sat there till the service was over in the choir hall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and occasionally somebody would play a violin, occasionally a, a harp, but we didn't have any guitars, <laughs> and we didn't have any drums. And uh, I think some of the songs that we sang back in those days were some of the old faithful hymns that yeah. Of course, we sing some now, but yes. not like we used to. Yes, all right. But I would say that the music and the dress had been most, two of the, the real changes. Music, yes. Uh, what about a, a pastor from years ago that stands out in your memory? Say, uh, let's say your most memorable pastor, if that's possible for you to, <laughs> to well, focus they, on one. They all, I have great memories of all of them and I thought the world of all of them. Uh, of course, Tom Fields was, he married Ida and I. Uh, Thornton Williams, he, uh, he was the minister at my mother and father's funeral, as I remember. And, uh, of course, Dr. Howard, he had children that were, close to my age, and the last time I remember seeing Dr. Howard when he, while he was still preaching, was, he came to see his son Willis down at Auburn and came by my room early one morning and came in to see me and he just said, uh, I love you folks like I can never love another. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was in Oklahoma City, I believe. Mm -hmm. Passed out there. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Well, dude, we, when you think back on all the passes we've had through the years, with probably Dr. Benz being the first one that any of us can remember, I, I don't recall ever having we having a sorry preacher. Right. Every preacher comes into the pulpit and he's studied, he's prepared. That's right. And uh, I, like somebody said, I don't. It's our preaching is something up with which we would not put, so we don't split an infinitive. That's right. <laughs> we, we never have had to put up with sorry preaching. Well, that's that's quite a statement, and no. uh, certainly, it's certainly you know, a true statement yes, too. No. Yeah, good, good. And in fact, we had one we liked so well we called him back. That, yeah, that that Donald Williams the, came the inside. second time. Oh yes, good. Yeah. I, right. I remember. I was on the committee that called him back, and I remember I was talking to my father-in-law, Mr. Fuller Calloway, and I told him we were thinking about calling one of the old pastors back. What did he think of that? And he said, depends on who it is. Yeah. <laughs> and when I told him it was Thornton Williams, he said, well, I think that'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. He, you had his blessing then. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, good. Well, you mentioned your, your marriage. You and your wife were married in this church. Uh, Probably some of your children, maybe. Uh, yes, they sir. Married in this. Married in the chapel. In yes, the chapel several. here. One was married in the main main part. Okay. The others were married in the chapel. Yeah. So you've had some memorable experiences here with your family, your personal experiences, certainly. Uh, you've been involved, I know, also with some of the building programs that they've had here. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, maybe I'll oh, include, if you will, the chapel. See, these are some things happened before Gene and I became a part of this church. <laughs> the chapel, uh, I've heard comments about the steeple, about uh, the uh, carillon, for example, those things. Well, the steeple was something that my mother-in-law, Ms. Alice Hand Calloway, that 
she wanted this church to have a steeple and she uh, made a proposal to the church that she would like to give a steeple to the church. And Mr. Callaway then kind of made me the in between there and the church. You were the facilitator, I, I guess. I, I, was, <laughs> I would be the go between, yes, I guess. Right. And we decided we'd better have some structural engineers look at the situation. And we got some structural engineers, and I went into the top part of the old sanctuary with one of the structural engineers. And, and the engineer told me he was afraid standing up there. He said, the thing's up here. And he said, I don't believe this thing can stand long. My goodness. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it brings me to the thought of one night in the service, one of the lights just turned loose and fell right on a pulpit. But Mr. Tom Parhill, who was our superintendent of Sunday school for many, many years, it came close to hitting him. But anyhow, it was decided that Structurally, the old sanctuary uh, needed more than just repair, and that's, of course, when it was torn down and the present sanctuary was built. But in placing the steeple on the old sanctuary... Quite a process. Huh? It was a process, and we spent more money underground than we did out of the ground oh. because of the, the foundation we had to put under the church to put the, hold the steeple up there. Mm -hmm. But the steeple... And then was taken off and it was designed to, redesigned to be on the present sanctuary. And at the same time, uh, Ms. Callaway thought in the steeple there ought to be some carillons in memory of, of Mr. Callaway. And I was given that job of finding out something about yeah. the carillons. Okay. I was given three, I got three different names of people who were in the Caroline business. and In the whole country, I guess. Yes. yes. This country in a way, too. Of course, I, I met with two of them and decided on one of them that presented the proposal that I took to the Fully Callaway Foundation. And, and then they approved it and the Carolines were ordered and they were built and shipped and put into the into the present steeple. And at first you couldn't hear the carillons too well and it was decided that one slat, every other slat in the steeple needed to come out so the sound would get out better. Mm -hmm. We had that done and you can now hear it outside. Yes. And I th they strike on the hour, and uh, we had a had a Caroline concert one time. Oh, and, uh, I'm sure that was a beautiful experience. It was. It was on a Sunday afternoon. Well, I know everyone's proud of that and pleased with uh, the, that contribution and the work they went into it, making it happen. Uh, I've heard that uh, the organ was renovated or repaired or something uh, along that line uh, and the funds were given by Mr. Ely Calloway. Is that, That's right. Is that right? <clears throat> Ely Calloway was <clears throat> Ely Calloway Jr. He he was the golf Calloway so to speak. He, oh yes. Uh -huh. He uh, he had given the the uh, organ console and it became time to work on it, and we thought it'd be good to mention it to Ely that the church needed some real work done on the organ, and we had some prices of getting it done, and we got Miss Lillian Clark to write a letter to Ely and telling them how we needed it, and, to, and Ely called Miss Lillian Clark up and, told her he was going to give us the money to do it. And it really pleased Miss Lillian Clark that she wrote the letter. We helped her with the letter. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then he, Ely called her up and told her he would give the money for it. So he gave the money to renovate the organ. And uh, it was completely done over, I think. I, I think it, the cost was... Uh, 
250,000. Oh, yeah. that's nice. And, wow. and I remember the cost. So it, yeah, it was. And, but somebody asked one of the men that when they were about through with the installation, she said, what do you think this organ would be worth today in the open market? He said, try 650. Oh. That's after they had done it. They spent 250. He said, it's worth 650,000 today. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And that was probably 20 years ago, wasn't it? 15 years ago. Well, when the, about 1995, yeah. when we built in this sanctuary. Right. Yeah. They reworked the organ at the same at time. That time. So, I see. Okay. Going back to the chapel, uh, Charles, uh, I've been impressed by the painting down there of Mrs. Calloway. Uh, who did that? painting. What can you say? The, what can you tell us about that? When the Sunday school part was built over the chapel was, <clears throat> was when that project was started Mrs. Cason Calloway and Mrs. Fuller Calloway who were sisters they uh, <clears throat> they wanted to give the chapel spend all spend the money to to decorate and build a chapel, and they wanted a picture of their mother-in-law, mm -hmm. Mrs. Mrs. Fuller Calloway Sr. in it. And her name, of course, was Ida. She was Ida Cason, yes. married Mr. Fuller Calloway yes. Sr. And they put the picture in this. I don't know who painted the picture. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm not Are sure. I don't recall sure. that. Uh, I don't yeah. either, but it was... I'd have been uh, Lamar Dodd, but I don't know. I that. don't believe it was. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, it could have been, but it was done, and then it was decided that the, it ought to come out of the chapel and go into the room that was always referred to as the bride's room, the way a bride could dress in there. Oh, yes. And uh, before an uh, undress or... Mm -hmm use that as a bride's room before and after the wedding. Mm -hmm. And it's in there now. And I know it's been renovated once since then. I think we we sent it over to Athens to uh, man at Lamar Dodd. Somebody Dog. vandalized it one time. That's they? right. They oh, did. Really? And they did. Oh, my goodness. And I contacted Lamar Dodd and he told me who to, could fix it and it was sent to Athens, I believe, and completely redone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's hanging down there now. Yes, yes, yes. In a very prominent place, of course, as it well should be. Well, do you have other comments or memories that you'd like to share with us? No, sir, but I, of course, love my church. And, uh, it's, it's meant a lot to me, and in my family, I, I, I say that I'm a Baptist primarily because my mother and daddy were Baptists, <laughs> and that's the reason I'm a Baptist. Yes. But part of your heritage. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, part of your heritage. Uh, Calvin, anything you'd like to add to what's been said here today? In this? But Charles talked about his mom and daddy. They brought him to Sunday school. I can remember that I taught William when he was like a 10-year-old boy. Or oh, his brother. Yeah, yeah. Charles' yeah. brother. You taught I, his brother. I, I never school. taught Charles, but I, I taught William. Yes. And he was in my class. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Calvin's saying I wasn't teachable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say no, that. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> oh, but I, I think it's wonderful, a great part that you and your family have had in our church all through the years. Everything that needs to be done, they've, they've been a part of it. Yes. Well, it Many just, times it was free will. They suggested doing it. Uh, yes. We didn't have to ask. They well, did it. It certainly, uh, no. it certainly comes out in our conversation here that he has indeed played a prominent role uh, in the last uh, number of years of this church, and we appreciate that. Charles, your, uh, your interesting comments and your memorable uh, memories of, of, this, uh, of your experience in this church certainly uh, 
uh, interesting and helpful and they'll now become a part of the archives of this church and they'll be appreciated not only by the present generation but by future generations to come and and we are thankful that you've allowed us to sit with you today and and reflect on on these experiences and on the history of our church and we wish you continued uh, good uh, health and happiness in the days ahead. Thank, Thank you, you sir. sir. I think Calvin and I are just part of the archive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. That's a good statement. There's not much that's happened in the last 50 or 60 years <laughs> that Charles and I hadn't been a part of. I'm sure. At least if we wasn't, we knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Calvin. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jack. Okay. All right.